everybody. This is Mr. LP, Steven Sykes, and we're here on Sister to Sister Can We Talk 101, but I'm not a sister at this moment. Today, I'm stepping in for our lovely host, Miss Tracy Hardy Scott, who had to step away. But we have wonderful guests today that is for a very good cause, a wonderful organization, and so many more things out there and just good things for you. And I'm going to let them all introduce themselves. You, young lady. Tamika Cousins Thompson. Okay. Siobhan Daughtery. All right. Sigourney Miles. And? And I'm Fred January. Uh, all right. Thank you. And this is an organization part of? The Faces Behind a Purpose for You. All right. Now, do us a favor. Tell us a little bit about the organization for those who are not familiar with it. The Faces Behind a Purpose for You is an organization where domestic violence intervention and prevention. We do advocacy. We do mentoring. We do job essentials, we do resume building, we tutor, we do GED preparation as well. Okay. Now tell me a little bit of all of your roles involved in all of this. What are you? Um, Vice President of um, the Faces Behind a Purpose for you. Okay. So if she doesn't get in the right order, you can get it straight, right? <laughs> okay. No problem. And you, Missy? Yes, um, I'm actually the model coordinator for our fashion show that's coming up on the 28th of this month. So I'm actually helping behind the scenes and in the scenes as well. All right, Mr. January. I am a designer. Um, I'm actually the designer of the Gordy brand eyewear. Um, and that's what I will be doing. So I will be the designer and I'm also the little cousin to <laughs> the owner of Faces Behind the Purpose. So. Um, I do a little bit of everything that she needs. So anything she needs, she calls us and we're there. Not a problem. So tell us a little bit about this fashion show uh, and this awareness that you have coming up. Um, Slay for a Purpose is to bring awareness to domestic violence, also educate, but also fashion um, for those and to inspire others that no matter what you have gone through or going through, that you still can be successful in life. Very much so. You know, right now we're getting a big growth of the Me Too campaign and a whole bunch of different things that's going on with all the controversy. And so you're having a fashion show to help bring about uh, more people, to bring in more education? To bring awareness to domestic violence, to educate, um, to inspire, to empower, to just give them some kind of uplift. Because sometimes they be down, they think they not somebody or they can't outcome their situation or they have to be stuck in their situation so we're going to have skits we're going to show um have them you know come out as you know they're successful you can be a lawyer you can be a doctor no matter what your situation um is you still can overcome that uh, definitely so for those who don't know why did you start this uh, organization why did you set up this event all these wonderful things well <clears throat> Back in 2014, I had a loved one to be killed to domestic violence, so that's what caused me to start a domestic violence organization. Gotcha. Now, for you, what do you feel about uh, you know domestic violence? We're seeing a big awareness, a big movement, more and more, and now we're heading into 2018, and you see more and more the world finally embracing the awareness of this situ situation with domestic violence and all the different forms of domestic violence. Tell us, how does it affect you, if you don't mind, personally and just professionally, how you see it's changing? Um, I see domestic violence changing um, more in uh, the school system. Mm -hmm. And it's not as much as I would like it to, but I see that now um, people are starting to understand how domestic violence could start. Mm -hmm. um, it could be something as simple as, you know, bullying or what you've encountered in your home. So there's so many different levels of domestic violence, and I'm happy that people are starting to know how we can get started. Young lady, Siggy. Well, I have never really experienced domestic violence, but I have been, I have family who are involved in domestic situations, and I see how it can pull them down and how it can, you know, make them feel less. So it's always an importance to have someone to try to speak out and reach out. Um, even now, 
as I'm talking about it, I'm hoping that this registers to say that, you know, you do have an opportunity to get out. You know, there are ways that people are here, you have right here on this couch, that want to reach out and help. Like, and that we're just reaching just women, we also reach out to men and children as well. You never know who is struggling. So if you know anybody, definitely, you know, let them know about us, you know, help us to get them out that situation and to do better. Um, I was glad to have gotten a call to assist as far as modeling coordinator because some of the models themselves have been, I don't like to call them victims, I like to call them uh, winners because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. overcomers because they've overcome and they won at the end of the day. So we have models that have experienced it, so this is their way to walk through their victory. So mm -hmm. that's my thoughts on them. And being a man, one of the men involved in this organization, sir, how do you feel regarding this and then maybe your experience regarding domestic violence? Um, I have, actually, I have experienced domestic violence. Um, it wasn't um, from a partner. Um, however, it was from a family member. Um, so I, wanna, I wanted to bring the awareness that domestic violence um, does not just only happen in relationships. It could be, be between family members and things of that sort. Um, but I also wanted to open everyone as to that it's not just um, a female's thing. Um, mm -hmm. Men can be victims of domestic violence as well. Mm -hmm. um, children. Um, and domestic violence isn't always physical. Most, most domestic violence situations start off as verbal. Yep. Um, so, um, you know, verbal domestic violence is, 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 is just as worse as being beaten. Um, so I just wanted to open everyone eyes to it's not just only a woman's thing. Um, and I also want to let them know it's not always a couple's thing. This is something that happens um, in families. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, since everybody on this panel is in their, you know, mid to young 20s, uh, I wanted to ask, how do you, why do you see it such a big resistance, you know, where, where people just don't want to talk about it? Like from your experience, like we understand the shame, embarrassment, but what is, deep down, why do you think some people are just resistant, especially men? And I want to start with you first because a lot of times we have this conversation, yeah, men will sit there and say, okay, we're going to put her in check, we're going to get him in check and things. And one of the things with domestic violence, even bullying is a form of domestic violence, you know, amongst your boys, so we was like, yo, go handle your business or all these other different phrases. Why is it such a resistance to have a change, a change of mind? Um, I noticed that, um, especially against men, especially men of color, Mm -hmm. um, it's all about this macho thing. So, you know, it, 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 everyone wants to be the man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they don't want anyone to know that they're going home, and, you know, and they're going through domestic violence situations. So I think um, a lot of people don't share because they are ashamed. Um, and it is some people that actually are in these situations that really doesn't even know that it's domestic violence. Um, because a lot of people have become so comfortable with these things happening mm -hmm. that you know, they don't realize that there's actually a problem. I won't come to you because I see your lies light up here. <laughs> you can talk to me. Yes, I am. Yes, Ms. Shabba. I'm so what? Why, why is it such a resistance for things? Because uh, somebody tells me you have a story to tell with that. <laughs> well, I just think, you know, Fred kind of, you know, he, he nailed it. Mm -hmm. um, shame, pride. Um, you never know. Either. Yeah, exactly. And you never know what the person next to you is going through. Yeah. So when you're in a domestic violence situation, you tend to feel like you're in it alone. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're too ashamed to talk about it to someone else. And like Fred said, it doesn't have to be um, someone that you are in an intimate relationship with. It could be a friend, a family member. I mean, it could, it could be anyone. And it often starts with verbal abuse. And P and I feel like people of color sometimes tend not, they don't know that they're actually going through a situation. Mm -hmm. Please, please. Yeah, I just want to piggyback off of what everyone has said so far. Also, it's become, as we like to call it, a generational curse. Mm -hmm. You know, we see our mother or father go through it, so we think it's just norm to go through this thing, because it's the prime example that I see is, is accepting this behavior, then I think it's okay for me as well. So sometimes you got to get down to the very root of this cause, because normally violence comes from something horrific has happened in someone's life, in childhood. It always starts from childhood that led up to adulthood. So, yeah. 
you know, it you know came down to the verbal, which leads up to physical. You know, we always have to look at where has it started from and how can we identify this thing and remove it. Good, so, because you mentioned the key word, identify those trigger points. Exactly. And because right. I don't think people don't realize there's certain triggers and then when you hopefully, and sometimes we get into these relationships before we mm -hmm. have some understanding of a person, but we realize there are these trigger points and we try to remove it because of we really want that relationship, we really want that friendship, we really want that person or that group to accept me, so I'm going to go through it. Mm -hmm. Hazing, the abuse, the verbal. What do you think about that? Well, I, I agree with what everyone else said, uh, a lack of knowledge. Um, not knowing or accepting that it's okay, and it's truly not okay. So I agree with what everyone else is saying about the mess that I Please. Um, and I also think that some people do it um, as, as a, a false sense of security. And let me explain that. Um, some people get so stuck in certain situations um, that they fear something better. Um, and sometimes they fear something better um, with fear that it could be just as it is or that it won't change you know um, and they don't always look at okay well this person is beating me some people think okay well he's beating me I might can leave him and the next person will be just like this you know and I think for people who think like that the best thing to do is you know escape the situation whole um, if that makes any sense um, it, it, it's best to go to those um, and to that point where you fear secure um, because, like I said, a lot of people do it for different reasons. And okay. I've seen people do it because, oh, well, he loves me and, you know, I feel secure and, you know, not realizing that. They think that's a level of strength. You hear that a lot of times for women and, and not casting in dispersions or stereotype, but you hear a lot of women that say, I, I need a man some type of excuse me, protection. And they feel that was protection. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of people who uh, not fall a victim to domestic violence, but stay a, mis a victim of domestic violence because, okay, he's paying the bills or he yes. does this or he does that. It's a false they sense care. of love. They, they, they compare that to love mm -hmm. and dependability. What do you think that, like, you mentioned something key, uh, Sigourney, about. Uh, triggers and the things when you initially started about that. Uh, do you think there needs to be a change in the legal system in regarding, and I'll say this with why, same thing with drugs or other things, the quick answer is just throw them in jail. But that doesn't fix the problem. Like you can throw everybody in jail, but it doesn't fix, uh, you know, you, the cake is not going to be good unless you fix the ingredients and the root of the problem. The same thing here. Do you think there needs to be a change in the system where they say, okay, and not to be, say, okay, it, it was right and dismissed what the man or the woman is going through in terms of the abuse. But should we find some me more mechanisms in place to address the issue more deep down root? Okay, let's find to the bottom of it. Let's separate you, of course, safety reasons. Mm -hmm. But then, okay, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's get you some counseling yeah. and everything else because sometimes throwing the guy and or the woman in jail is not going to be the part of uh, solving because now there's children involved. You got employment, and now you're making the situation worse. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree that once it's been acknowledged that this is an issue, there should be some type of way where we can cater to that and fix it. You know, um, like I said, normally it stems from a situation, uh, like I said, from childhood. You never know, you know, because, again, when we're children, we're only brought up for what our parents tell us. Mm -hmm. We only know right from wrong for what our parents or whomever was involved in our lives showed us how to be. Now, there is a choice. You do have a choice. You know, you do have situations where, you know, you may be in a violent situation, but you can say, you know what, because I grew up this way, that doesn't mean I have to continue this way. So it can have a side, side, uh, you know, therapy session where counseling where it can be held, but it also has to be a purpose where you have to know within yourself, do you want to change? It has to come from there. I want to speak on this as well, please. Um, I also feel like, um, and I now want to speak, this is not only to the women, I want to speak um, to fathers as well. Um, what you're doing when you allow this cycle to continue is you're sending a message to the children that this is all okay. right. Yeah. This is okay. Um, I feel like we, the things that we go through is only setting, um, it's setting a tone for what our children are going to do. So I feel like if you are a victim of domestic violence, it needs to stop now because exactly. it's not only harming you, but it's also um, harmful to your children. So um, that's one thing that I wanted, I did want to touch on. I'm definitely. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then a couple of things that we haven't mentioned. 
mental illness and substance abuse. That's, that's, that's very next, true. That's my next word direction. Yes, yeah, very much so. It'd be you was about to say something else. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say as an example. Um, I didn't really get the green light to tell her story, but my mother, she grew up in a domestic violence situation with her adopted mother. Mm. My her adopted mother was an alcoholic. She drank. So when she drank, she was violent. So as my mom growing up in a violent situation, here she is now with three daughters and never once did anything that she was brought up on. So again, it's a choice. And, 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 and but what you but you mentioned the key thing with both of you is a ment, uh, mental illness. Yeah. Because the, the alcohol brought on the mental illness yeah, of all the anger and everything. Exactly. Else. And then so it which led to the domestic violence. Exactly. And again, that's where you mentioned and it's funny we need to have because, something um, going on. I was actually it's so funny because um, I was actually going to bring my mom too to talk about um, situations and stuff that occurred when I was younger, and I don't have it okay to actually tell her story. Um, and she actually said to me that she would want to tell her story herself. Um, so I'm not sure if we may have a role or somewhere in the show or something where we can have women tell their story. You know, all the time, there's besides your organization, Scars, Box, there's a whole bunch of different avenues right here. And even if you just want to do it yourself, and please, if you're watching this video, if you just feel like to if say it yourself, if you want to write it down, put a book or audio, want somebody else to tell a story, please. Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, there may be a present time in their spirit, God, whatever, for that person to tell that story at that point moment in time, but it has to be from their point of view, yes. because it's only gonna that's only gonna be the way to heal. Heal, exactly. Yeah. That's their healing process. Exactly. Because a, a lot of times people get involved in things and have not really healed. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Mm -hmm. That is true. That's very true. The next uh, aspect I want to ask uh, regarding this is what you see an issue here. Now we're here in America. We're supposed to be a multicultural society, but we still have many cultures that's here. It's part of America, and even unfortunately, those American that still feel like it's okay, especially those who are from countries that where women do not have the same level of power or respect. And I still don't think we have it enough here in America, from my opinion. But we still got these countries that's very strict. Women do not say you have a place society, but yeah, they're here. There's a lot of, I mean, it's so funny that you touched on that. And, and you know, there's a lot, of, well, not even a lot, but I know there's one religion um, per se um, that women can't even talk directly to another man if she's not, if it's not her husband. Okay. Um, and I think, I mean, I think that's, I, I really don't respect that too much because I feel like that's more of a form of control. Um, I feel like um, you should be able to talk to anyone that you want to, you know, because I'm your husband or because I'm your mate doesn't mean that you should be selected on who you can or can't talk to. Mm -hmm. That's like a form of mental, um, it's, mm -hmm. I feel like it's mental control. And it's spiritual abuse. It is. Yes, it is. Yes. Oh, no, I agree with Fred and both of you. Um, um, Tamika, I don't, that's not something I will agree with. And I think it goes on a lot more than what we actually know, especially here in America. Very much. Now, we also have an issue where workplaces, jobs, many jobs do not have a work, um, workplace policy. Even some will, if you mention it to them, they want to fire you or consider you the troublemaker. Right. How can we fix that on the job? Um, thing? Like, what can we do to try to fix that? Hmm. That's a, a kind of tough question, but, um, I think the workforce, because I hear a lot of women, based off a seminar that I just went to, a lot of corporate women goes through domestic violence, but like you stated, they don't have no one in the workplace that they can go to. So maybe set up some type of, some jobs have a EAP, an employee assistance program, or some type of program for women or men that is experiencing domestic violence that where they can go to a safety zone, um, somebody that they can trust for that type of situation that's occurring in the workplace. Now I know all of y'all are independently wealthy, but when you were working the nine to five, uh, no. did y'all job did y'all have uh, did y'all have a workplace policy regarding domestic violence? Um, um. See, what I, normally what I did from the age of 18 until 31, up until four months ago, all I did was mental health. Mm -hmm. um, so we was really, really big on HIPAA and um, things of that sort, HIPAA and, you know, um, 
a lot of different other things. So um, most companies that I worked for, we did have policies, but you have to realize that a lot of these companies' policies are only taken as serious as the owners take them. Yep. So but because there That's is a policy true. there, doesn't mean that the people higher up are going to respect the policy that they created. Created, yeah. It has to be. It, here's a. There has to be level of what you mentioned enforcement and uh, protection. And in addition, I think that this is where there needs to be some type of, uh, we have a uh, right to work state, you know, our at will state, they hire, fire you, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that there should be a law that protects the person because if someone's involved in a domestic violence situation in three to four months or whatever, we're going to let her go. I think that there needs to be some type of protection because all you could do is spin that person back into a spiral while she's trying to, mm -hmm. he or yeah. she right. is trying to heal. Exactly. Um, and because now, then that person may commit something to somebody else for what they may experience. It could trigger off a bunch of different situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the next What's the next go? Tell us about the date and time and the location of the event. It is going to be October the 28th at 4 p.m. at 3006 East Laverne Avenue, Worship and Praise Deliverance Church. I'm sorry, say that again. The name of the church, please. Worship and Praise Deliverance Church. Okay, Worship and Praise Deliverance Church, okay. And so as we're closing out 2018, what's the finishing up for this year and what's some goals for the organization next year? Well, this is going to be our last event for the year. And moving forward of 2018, we are hoping God bless us with the transitional home. Yes, we need more homes, uh, transitional homes, especially families. You know, a majority, I think it was like 78% uh, in transition homes don't necessarily have to be just for women only. Right. But 78% are a lot of women who are involved are with children mm -hmm. trying to escape but can't because of children and may not feel comfortable going to another family member right. or whatever situation. I've seen people will say, uh, you mentioned before, uh, the old baby, go back home. He did not mean it. She did not mean it. It's okay. You need to toughen yeah. up. But Listen to the he knows where he knows where they're going. Right. right. It's very There's true. no safety it's zone. Or be judged. they give them the option of, um, do you have any family member you want to live with? What if you don't want to tell your family member? Mm -hmm. What if you don't want to open up to that family member? So, yeah, I'm just praying that God bless us with the transition home because some of the scenarios that we have experienced um, where they can't, no one want to let them in a the shelter because mm -hmm. either they working or they they don't have kids or I don't want to touch them because it's mental illness. But you got to understand domestic violence and mental illness plays a part. So exactly. it's either are you going to, are you do you truly want to help them or do you truly want to send them back to the situation? Exactly. Start with the whole family, men emotional, women emotional. You know, everybody's emotional, it doesn't matter. And that's right. what invokes all these different um, care issues. Um, and we definitely need, and all of y'all have children or work with children. What, what have y'all educated your children regarding domestic violence at this point? Um, for mine, I have taught them how to know the red signs, even in friendships. Exactly. You know, it's not okay for them to yell at you, call you out your name, you know, play pushing and it's, that's not okay. Those are signs of some type of abuse. So that's why I have started with like the basic um, signs of domestic violence with the kids. Um, same here with my daughter. I have, um, I have two daughters actually. And same thing, just started out with the basic knowledge of the red flags of domestic violence as far as the friendships. And just making sure they understand it's not okay for another person to put their hands on you. Mm -hmm. And I teach my children, don't play, you know, hitting someone else or, you know, you want to play hitting and then they come back and hit you too hard. I just want to, I make sure they understand there is no reason why there should be any type of exchange like that. How old are your daughters now, may I ask? 19 and 10. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I have two separate conversations. Okay. 
and to understand. So it, 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 these days, it's almost to a point where you really kind of have to have the same conversation with both. Like, right. these, these children are growing up it's fast. Yes. Uh, yes. You say it every generation, but it just seems like, you know, nine, ten year olds are dancing and doing all types of things. And they come back home later than the parents. <laughs> don't get that. That's very true. That twerking thing. I see a lot of them doing it these days. That twerking thing. Yeah. 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 I think the biggest thing is um, I try to make sure I build a relationship with my, with my daughter's teachers and their exactly. school. I make sure my face is known. Mm -hmm. And I uh, have a very low tolerance with bullying and, um, you know, with children. Um, exchanging hands. Stop being nice. You don't have a low tolerance. You don't have. I don't have. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, we don't have to be nice here, okay? You're right. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that point. Um, yeah, I like to speak on the fact that um, I worked with childcare, so as a teacher, it's very important to have a connection with the parent as well, so they can see how they flow and how things operate so even why i'm handling other children other people's children as well i let them know as well as far as being with an adult how an adult should treat you as well like don't tolerate this because it's miss so-and-so or mr whoever yep. um so as that is concerned and as a parent myself pretty much what my ladies have said the signs and you you don't use your hands to hurt you use your hands to help so if it comes down to that situation you need to know what steps to take. And I don't have a girl, I have a boy. So it's more important for me to drill that in him and let him know, you know, what is the important steps. You can't play with a girl like you do with a guy. You know, you can't do that. You can't wrestle and all that. Some of these girls beat you up. <laughs> That's very true. Some of these girls are worse than the guys. That's very like, true, I'm however. But I'm training my son never to put his hands on a woman, period. Okay, good. That's right. Good. Period. Good. Good. You know, if it escalates because he's seven, if it ever escalates to that point, he knows who to go to. See, you I know? wish you, I wish somebody would have told some of these girls when you, you know, growing up in the city, you get all these girls come up and ready to fight yeah. at four. <laughs> you didn't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and again, that's what they're accustomed to and that's what they see. Children only do what they see. Mm -hmm. yeah. They imitate yes, what absolutely. they see and what they hear. So we can't always say, oh, it's the child. It's not the child. The child is just like a sponge and absorbing everything the parent is putting into them. So, and like I said, by me working with children of all ages, that's what I see. And I have to say, okay, we have to separate what you see at home and what you do here. So it's a working thing. And that's why I'm so glad that you mentioned that you speak to the teachers and let them know what's what. And it's very important for parents to not just throw their kids on teachers, right. you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, you go to school, eight hours, eight hours a day, I don't have to deal with you, you know, so it's very important to build that bond with whomever is over your children. <laughs> because it's, it's very important, because in addition, because I've grown up initially in the city and then going into the country, you see a lot of where, back in the day, once the child, especially a woman, was 12, 13, maybe 14, you're on your own, mm -hmm. I done got you to this point, by then, you know, you were considered less than, if you were by 12, you couldn't cook and clean and everything, run a house by the time you were 12, because that was um, yeah. passed on. Mm -hmm. And then now you're up left to the wolves, but you're still, a, a, no offense, but a little girl. And you you should be allowed to, at, you know, granted we all have to take responsibilities as we get older, but you should let a child be a child. Exactly. You know, because we get to this exactly. point of like, oh, they're the little man in the house or to the little woman in the house, but you do not know that you're casting a bad spirit, and uh, no disrespect to anybody, but you're casting a bad spirit towards that child. Okay. Um, my first thing is, and, and it's kind of like what everybody said, I think the core is what we really need to do, and while we're speaking on children, we need to teach children how to love. I don't think um, children are being taught properly how to love. Um, so people are, um, so, so many people are so wrapped around what the child's gonna grow up to love, or once you teach a child how to love, I feel like they know, you know, just the um, just the education of love teaches them what to and what not to accept. Um, so um, I feel like as parents and as um, as guardians and stuff of that sort, our main thing is you know teaching them what love is. Mm -hmm. um, and once you find out what real love is, you know that love is not meant to hurt anyone. Exactly. Um, so, exactly. like I said, I think the core value is teaching them exactly what love is, and love shouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And then the main thing, uh, the last thing I want to hit on when you mentioned the schools is that our community need to get, to get involved uh, wholeheartedly, not just to say to be in somebody's business, to go be do the run to dad or to be nosy and girl, oh God, do this, that and the other. We need to be more involved. 
Um, what are some of and besides the wonderful things that y'all doing individually and within the organization, what are some other suggestions you might say for those who may be in an area who may not have the say, okay, organization to be a part of or the ability to start one, but what could they per that individual or maybe that business could do to help the community? Go out in the communities and offer your services. Go into the communities. Go into those, you know, communities that need that help. Mm -hmm. Be seen. Be visible. Um, that's the next thing. Be visible. Be, be there. Be, you know, um, like, and, and this is something I'm really big on. You never know what another, what another person is going through. So be that person that someone can come to and talk to. Mm -hmm. You know, be that, be that shoulder to cry on if that makes any sense because you never know what someone is going through but your attitude um your attitude has a lot to do with is this person going to want to come to you or is this person going to just want to run away from you um so just just always i feel like we should go on in life knowing that we never know what another person is going through so always place yourself in a position that someone wouldn't mind coming to talk to you Amen. So it's just being there, being visible, and you know your attitude um, projects a lot about you. So being positive, staying positive, uh, it gives people that um, that door, that open door to come to you in need. And, um, and trust. Very much. You gotta build that trust. I have one last question for each of one of you. What is the personal affirmation that you tell each other yourself daily? I know I start trouble all the time. <laughs> yes. um, what I say all the time um, to myself is not about me. It's truly not about me. If I can impact one's life, I'm happy with that. So I like to alleviate myself out of the situation, and it's truly about that person. Um, for me, I. Um, Tough question. <laughs> yes. um, for me, I told myself just be the best person that you could be. Because if I'm at my best, then I can give you the best. That is true. That's true. You know, lady? Um, these two lovely ladies pretty much said what I was thinking in my head. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but um, I guess I'm just going to piggyback. Um, we're all here for somebody. We're not ourselves our mission and our creation is to reach out to someone else to uplift someone else mm -hmm. so you have to be humble in everything that you have and everything that you're doing mm -hmm. and make sure that you are walking the way that God has appointed you to be yes. mm -hmm. so that you can help save someone else or you can inspire someone else I guess you could say it's like Tamika said it's not about me me, um, that's one thing and I, I, I man, to me to kind of talk about this a lot, um, but um, my, my, the affirmation that I tell myself daily is passion without purpose is pointless. Um, I feel like you should have, um, you should have a point behind your passion. Um, a lot of people go astray because they do it just for them. They're so focused on just them um, that they don't see or realize that there's other, there's a world outside of them. Um, so my thing is I just want to use my passion for fashion and everything else that I'm, I'm deeply rooted into um, for a purpose to make a difference in the lives of everyone that I touch. So I just want to use my passion um, to make a difference. Amen. I want to thank y'all very much for taking the time out to come out and explain and everything else. And again, can you uh, tell the location, the day and time, please? It is October the 28th at 4 p.m. Doors will open at 3 p.m. at 3006 East Laburnum Avenue, Worship and Praise Deliverance Church. And how much are the tickets? And tickets are $10. Food, fun, and fashion, all while raising awareness for domestic violence. Amen. And you're involved helping everything. You're coordinating. Both of y'all coordinating, getting involved. Got all these other things. Any surprises you want to let go? No. no, you got to come to the show. Yeah, and just realize that you guys are not alone. Um, we are a family here to help each and every one of you, whether you're male, female, child. Um, we're here for you. Um, so uh, if you are in need or you need someone to talk to, if there's anything that we can do 
Tamika can do, Siobhan, Sigourney, me, or anyone involved in the organization. If you just come that day and say you need help, we are there for you. So just know that you can reach out to us at any time for any reason, and we will be there to help. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, they can contact you how? 804-729-2229. Yeah, all right. I thank you again for your time. Can you say your names again for everybody? Tamika Cousins Thompson. Siobhan Daughtery. Sigourney Miles. Fred January. And I'm Mr. LP, Stephen Sykes, stepping in for author Tracy Hardy Scott. Yeah, she's she going to kill me. Author Tracy Hardy Scott, Raw Silk. Thank you very much for Sister to Sister Can We Talk 101. And we appreciate you. May you guys have a great and blessed day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.